Orientation is locked. Rotate device back. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk about how to wind yarn into a cone so that you can knit it more successfully on your CSM. Okay? Now, my cameraman, which is also my husband, is dangerously close to putting his finger on the camera because yeah, that would <laughs> see how he is. Okay. So there's all kinds of ball winders out there, and the first thing everybody wants to do is they want to knit from a ball that's been wound. Well, we're going to do a couple of ball winding exercises real quick, and we're going to talk about why sometimes it's not good to knit from a ball. But we're also going to talk about how to make cones. Now, in order for this to be a decent ball. I've got a bunch of ends that I'm going to wind into a ball and weigh them and see if, that I, see if I can make some Frankentucks out of them. But what I want to show you, it's going to have to get to be a different, a bigger ball before I can actually show you. Whoops, there was a knot. It's a good thing I'm going to have to wind this twice, isn't it? What I want to show you is, you know, even though this one is a slanted one, and a lot of times the slanted ones make good cakes to knit from, I want to show you what makes a good cake and what makes a bad cake. Now, I'm going to show you this one over here while I'm knitting. This ball winder over here, see how it's slanted as well? Okay. And it operates the same exact way. But what I want to show you is, let me get this this one wound up under here, and we will be right at. But I wanted to show you this from winding it, so that you would know that it's true. Not all ball winders are true. Okay, or cake winders. Let's call it a cake winder. So this cake right here was wound on this one. Now, you could knit from this because if you see, it wraps the yarn on top, but it doesn't wrap the yarn on bottom, okay? So we could set this on the table and knit from it because see how it twirls nicely from the outside. Anytime you're gonna use a cake, if you want two socks that are the same size, you're gonna want to twirl from the outside, okay? Now look at this ball we just created. You see how it is building this cake, but it's wrapping yarn on the, in, on the bottom, and it's wrapping yarn across the top, okay? You can't wind something that you can knit from on this type of ball winder, okay? So, that's what I wanted to show you that you can't do. Now, if you are lucky enough to find one of these royal cone winders, they're very difficult to find. So if you find one, it's going to come with a hat. Now, this is a hat that's been printed on plastic by Turtle Maid. Okay? And you wind the yarn up on this. Now, in order to not have to have many hats, you can take a Yoplait -like cup and you can put it on the hat and then wind onto here like so. That way, you would get a comb wound that looks like that. Okay? These are going for like $75 right now. They are so not worth it, but they're also very rare. Uh-oh. I'm making a big, giant mess. Tried to be so organized. Now, originally, CSMs came with 
a yarn winder that looks like this. Okay, now what you would do on this yarn winder is you would get a bobbin. Now some of these, this one has a narrow, a narrow shaft, this one has a wider shaft. So when you buy bobbins or look for bobbins, you're going to have to know do you have the wide one or the thin one. And you get an O-ring and then you start winding yarn like so. Okay, now this is the way they initially, initially wanted you to wind the yarn. And I'm going to show you real quick. I'm lucky enough to have some of this Felici that our very own Rosalind Keys designed this colorway called Vampire Vibes. I thought I'd use that today. Because everybody knows Roz and everybody wants to knit like Roz. Now there's a knot that sailors use and it's called a clove hitch. And sometimes I can do a clove hitch and sometimes I can't. But when you start one of these cones, or one of these bobbins, what you're going to do is you're going to build your base. Okay? And you want to build this into a triangle. And I did not want that to be up that high. Okay, because like everything else about the CSM, this is takes practice. And I am not the very best at it because I will go ahead and freely admit that see all this yarn on cones? <laughs> That's what I knit from right there. And it makes it much, much easier when your yarn is on a cone. If you can find yarn pretty wound on the cones. Now, I chose to show you this on this these Felici uh, skeins of yarn. They are 50 grams. I didn't want you to have to watch me wind 100 grams. But you can see how I'm building up the base. And every time when I come out to the edge, I make it just a little longer. Just a little longer. Okay. See how that's going? And it takes a little practice to get it to go so nicely. And you don't want there to be a gap. You want this triangle to keep coming out, okay? That's why it's so important to build your base up. And you can move your hand back and forth like this as you get something to work with. Okay? And you don't have to go so darn fast. Now, see how that got loose right there? I don't want that. That looseness is going to create yarn bars. So, I want to get that off of there and redo it. Alright, so I'm going to get back down here and my cake or my comb See how you, this would be too much of a step. If I step off of there, I, I will create that looseness. That'll be the yarn bar. So I'm just going to have to work from here to here. Okay, look here, I'm almost done. It's a rhythm that you develop. I think you guys have that figured out now. Okay. Now then, you can also get yourself a number 11, uh, what do you call it, like a beaker stopper. I think I got this one at uh, Menards. And you can get some cardboard cones and you can wind yourself a cone on the same yarn winder, only you put the cone or you put the cone on this bottle stopper, like so. 
okay? So building a cardboard cone is very similar. You have to build up the base. Do we have any messages, Jeff? Somebody said hi from Ontario. That disappeared. Okay. Hi in Ontario. Alright. So the next this is another one. This is a Mitten 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 Mora. Okay. And it's for weaving. I saw one of these for sale on the fiber exchange group the other day. But I actually got this from Celeste. I didn't know what I was buying. And Celeste said, hey, do you want a mats and more for 30 bucks? And I thought, well, Celeste said it, I've got to have it. We also have to thank Celeste Angelo for giving us this idea. Oh, why it's watching from Tennessee. Oh, hi. You have to um, thank Celeste's idea. Celeste for giving this idea of the number 11 bottle stopper. Okay, so I'm just going to wind it on this one. It does the same thing. Let's see. I'm going to start back here. And it's not a race. I'm going to go nice and slow. And I'm doing it on this one because it was set up closer to me. I just wanted to show you guys all these different options. Now, you can also put this number 11 bottle stopper on the cordless drill and uh, wind your, your bobbin that way. What I found though is that cordless drills, they weren't made for long periods of like that. They were made for short bursts, but they work. Right, so we're going to build up our base, and you'll notice on the commercially wound cone, why isn't it working? I think we should have gone this direction. That's not going to be easy just to change direction though, is it? No. What are we going to do? Okay. Nope, we won't put it on that because that is not long enough for that cone. Alright. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this is another colorway of Felici that our friend Roz designed. It's called Carrot Cake. So everybody buy Roz's colorways, Vampire Vibes and Carrot Cake. That way they'll ask her to make some more because everybody loves it so much. It came from Nippet. Alright, now I've already forgotten which way I'm supposed Sylvia says working at the bottle stoppers. Huh? Sylvia wants to know where to get the bottle stoppers. Well, you can order it on Amazon. Number 11 bottle stopper. I got it at Menards. Just make sure it has a hole in it. And if the hole's not big enough, you just smash it in there. It's rubber so you can smash it on there really good. My aunt sis always used to say, you'd think they'd have this figured out by now, how to get that out of there. And it goes way faster when nobody's watching it. We're going to see that too. But, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of different ways to do this and show you how to build up your cone. And that's kind of what you have to think about. You have to go slow. Now, if your yarn is in a skein and you have to put it on the swift, I would wind it into a bottle. Now, is it that way or is it this way? It's this way. Did you see how good that went? same thing. I can make it go up just a little bit each time, but I don't want to get that close to the end. Oh, the okay. Let's see. Let's 
Are you adding tension with your hand while winding? Um, I'm holding it. I'm not pinching. I don't want to pull it as tight as I possibly can because I don't want the yarn to be on this cone, like, pull that tight. I want it just to be normal yarn. So I'm holding it so that I can feel for knots and guide it at the same time that I am not pinching. And again, if I get up here and I see looseness, I want to stop and unwind. Again, this is carrot cake, Felici yarn. The colorway is carrot cake, and it came from Netflix. And Rosalind Pease designed it. And I'm feeling pretty cool because I know the designer. And I have a little knot. That wasn't actually a knot. You know how it is when you get to the end. yarn onto a cone. Now even if you have to take it and go like this, it's still better to do this while you're watching TV than to knit from a center pool ball or knit from a cake that is not properly wound. Okay? Thanks for joining me everybody. Did you figure it out yet? Nope. Is there an X or something?